welcome to Gold Coast Light Rail Science Tram, where we travel Queensland's first light rail system and discover the exciting science and engineering challenges that the project team have encountered to bring the system to life. Light Rail has a proven track record for revitalising cities by connecting people and places. Internationally, more than 100 cities worldwide feature light rail infrastructure, including Paris, London and Barcelona. But have you ever wondered how the tracks are laid? Eloise has this report. Thanks Libby. We're here at Concrete Provider, Borrell's Gold Coast plant, to discover the track laying process, starting with how concrete, which holds tracks in place, is made. Concrete is a composite construction material, meaning that many different matters or materials go into making concrete. I caught up with Borrell's Gold Coast Production Manager for Concrete, Wayne, to find out what is involved. Concrete is an irreversible matter, which means once it goes through the chemical change, which turns it to a solid mass from a liquid form, it can never return to the original liquid state. There was lots of testing undertaken to come up with the perfect form for the concrete selected for the Gold Coast Light Rail. We need to make the tram as safe as possible and the concrete needed to withstand weight and friction caused by the trams as well as the heat from the Gold Coast Sun. To create one cubic metre of concrete, McConnell Dow's rail team uses the following materials. 460 kilograms of cement and fly ash, 200 litres of water, 985 kilograms of 20 mil and 10 mil aggregate and 614 kilograms of sand, coarse and fine. Wow, so there are five different material matters which make up concrete. So if we were to observe the properties of concrete, we would be able to see that there is liquid in the form of water, small grains of sand and aggregate and fine powder, cement. So how does this make concrete? When the water is mixed with the dry materials, cement, aggregate and sand, it forms liquid concrete which is malleable and able to be shaped. Once this is made, trucks transport the concrete onto the construction site where it will be poured around the tracks. To discover what happens once the liquid concrete is poured around the tracks, let's cross to Kaimana who's on site with McConnell Dow's Rail Project Manager, Greg. Thanks for joining us today, Greg. So, What's the next step in the process? Following the concrete pour, the tracks are coated in a curing compound and also wrapped in plastic. This is important for the concrete to set and also to control surface cracking. It is important for the concrete to remain wet so it can gain its strength. The concrete is tested at seven days after the pour and again at 28 days for strength. This concrete will be fully cured at 28 days and will have enough strength to hold the trams. Today we've learned about the observable properties of matters. We have seen how the liquid concrete, which is poured around the trucks, goes through an irreversible chemical change to become a solid object after drying and setting. What matter materials do you have at home that do a similar thing? Have you ever seen a cake baked in the oven? It starts out as a liquid form and turns solid when heat is added. In a way, the making of concrete is very similar, isn't it? Perhaps you can try this at home. Back to you, Libby. Until the next time we travel the Gold Coast Light Rail Science Tram, keep loving learning.